Hey, folks, welcome to InTheMoneyStocks.com's intraday analysis video brought to you by the creators of proprietary price, pattern, and time methodology. Learn the PPT strategies and profit for life. My name is Gareth Soloway, Chief Market Strategist here at InTheMoneyStocks.com, and today's date is Monday, February 24th, 2014. So markets right off the bat, folks, are having a nice push to the upside. The key here is that the markets broke through the S&P 500 all-time high from January 15th. So right now, we are currently trading about five points above that on the S&P. Now, I'm curious to see where this market goes into the close today. And then the bigger issue is, do we confirm it tomorrow? All right, so I think that's what the end game is going to be. Do we confirm tomorrow the breakout today? All right, and if you don't confirm it, then remember, this is a classic game being played. That's why I created the confirmation signal, a proprietary signal that basically alerts investors whether it's a true breakout or a fake breakout. And a fake breakout, those things happen all the time where the institutions are trying to get the average investor on the wrong side of the market before they just reverse it really quickly. How many times did you buy a breakout or you shorted a breakdown and all of a sudden it reversed on you, went the opposite way, and you were set, sitting there scratching your head? Well, the confirmation signal is exactly that. It tells you when it's a true breakout or a fake breakout. Okay, so that's what we have going on here, folks. And again, s and is up about 19 points, Dow up 176, NASDAQ up 45. So, I mean, it's a pretty solid rally across the board. Now, at this stage, what we're going to be looking for, again, is where this market closes. And then from that point on, we're going to be looking to see if we get confirmation tomorrow. All right, a couple things in um, importance today. All right, number one, take a look at J.P. Morgan Chase. All right, J.P. Morgan was getting my attention earlier today because if you look at the chart intraday, it's really not participating fully in this rally. All right, so that's one of the things that I kind of am watching here to see. If you notice early in the day when the markets were spiking initially, JPM got a beautiful surge, then came all the way back down, and since then pushed back up, but it wasn't even able to take out those highs. In addition, look at the weak price action you're seeing right now. So these little signals are just, it's nothing to write home about on JPM, but it is something you want to monitor. Now, all last week I was giving out a short trade on Apple, talking about how on the daily chart, all right, let me bring up the daily chart for you, all right, on the daily chart it was a short off of this gap fill right here, and I said it would come right down to the 20 MA, and I said once it gets to the 20 MA, you could be a buyer of this stock, of Apple, and sure enough, look at today up $2.25 off a little bit of a gap down right off the 20 MA. And that's exactly what you do here. So basically, just to go back, you were able to call based on my alert, the top on Apple, and now the little bit of a buy right down here. And so far, both are working out perfectly. And that's just understanding the mentality of the markets and uh, understanding how markets work and how markets trade. A couple other stocks that I think are warranted our discussion today. First off, topping tail on Friday on Expedia. That stock is down today, even in the rally in the market. So I think that's important because I'm noticing on Priceline, I'm actually very bearish on Priceline. You can see how it gapped up on Friday on earnings and then reversed and basically closed near the lows of the day. Even though it was still green on Friday, it still closed near the lows. And then also notice today's price action on Priceline. The markets are having a great rally. NASDAQ's up significantly, and Priceline is up $2.75. That's it. That's 0.2% when the NASDAQ is basically up 1 plus percent. All right, so you can see a lagging signal. This is what I call weakness starting to emerge in an individual name relative to the market. And what does it tell us? Well, it basically tells us that if the markets were to pull back in the future, let's say Wednesday or Thursday of this week or even tomorrow possibly, then price line should lead to the downside. It should be weaker because today it's weaker than the overall market. So if the market gets weaker, then price line should be even weaker than that. And these are the types of things you have to kind of pay attention to. So uh, I believe actually price lines near, and I'm not saying it's necessarily the exact top here, but it's within a small percentage, few points of being at a multi-month high here. All right, the signals, the max move signals, the, the key levels that I'm watching, all coinciding here, uh, telling us that we have a top in this market. Okay, what else do we have out there? Facebook. 
Let's talk a little Facebook today. Facebook having a decent move to the upside. Uh, I actually think Facebook's nearing its max out at this point. I actually think it probably is right around that max out point today. And again, you can see the gap up here on earnings and then the subsequent move up. And again, as the media kind of gets more accustomed to the buyout of WhatsApp and kind of understanding exactly what's going on there, you should see Facebook start to stall out and come back in. And again, I'm actually looking for a pullback on Facebook to this area, this kind of pivot high going back to the December, late December, early January period before the breakout. You should see a retrace into that 58, 59 area on the stock. Okay? Uh, what else do we want to discuss today? Uh, a couple small caps moving today. KNDI, which is a uh, electric car-ish company in China, having a 13% move today. So that's a decent little move. Uh, nothing major to write, write home about about that, though. It's just a nice little uptick. We've been keeping an eye on some of the other Chinese stocks because of it. And uh, there are some good ones out there that we're monitoring and playing as well. Uh, I think we should mention GLD. GLD today is having a small update. It's had a big run. I'm actually getting to the point where, see this gap fill right over here? Here going back to kind of late October, early November, that's actually where this is, this is going to go, and it's just about there now. So I would actually be in a position. I actually think I might even take a whack at shorting gold maybe tomorrow if it gets to that exact gap fill right around the 130 Pierce level. Uh, I would think that at that stage, I think that's my level to look on the short. Okay. So again, that's just something to just to monitor there. Silver, same thing. Silver, a pretty impressive move to the upside. But look at this little doji forming today on on uh, on SLV. So you know, it really, I don't think I'm going to short SLV in the short term, even though it's into gap window. If it got to gap fill, I think around the 22, 2175 level, that's where I would go for it. But that's still a little ways away. Uh, but USO, I think US, USO, which is the oil ETF, important to kind of notice here as well. Uh, this is your short level up here, so it still has a little ways to go. It's interesting to see all the commodities rallying together. We've seen gold, silver, oil all rallying to the upside. And uh, sure enough, we'll watch and see how it pertains because it's been going with the market. Markets have been going up and these commodities have been going up. So it's usually the opposite when you see, you know, kind of more calmness in the markets then you see gold come down when the markets are going up usually gold sells off but we haven't been seeing that there's been a disparity in that chart late lately it's a little bit of a divergence as we call it okay uh, what else do we have here on the charts let me just scan through take a look at IBM yeah I mean IBM I don't see any sort of trade on the daily chart it would have to get to the 200 and there's a gap fill right up here you know going into January period that gap fill right there that would be the first area where you'd consider shorting that stock. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Goldman Sachs, we talked about a little bit of weakness in JPM today, but Goldman's not showing it. Goldman's actually leading the charge today, up $2.66 or 1.6%. So notice how Goldman's stronger than the market, while JPM is actually weaker than the overall market today. A couple little tidbits. Yahoo continues to be under pressure, up a little bit today, but only up $0.29 cents in a pretty strong market. And again, uh, I continue to be short in the money on this play. Has a nice bullish pattern, but any sort of weakness in the market coming in, and this stock will roll right through those moving averages, and the bullish pattern should fail. That's what I expect it to do. And right now, again, being in the money, we're kind of in the driver's seat on this one anyways. Okay, so I would say the biggest one out there that I'm seeing weakness in that's still near its highs is Priceline, PCLN. Uh, Expedia with the topping tail, great one there for a potential short. Um, aside from that, everything else kind of looks like it's just floating with the market. And uh, we've seen good gains on Chevron and Exxon on the back of the commodity surge lately, as uh, we have seen, again, oil moving back above the 100 even number level. All right. On that note, folks, I'm going to step aside here. Let's just jump back to the SPY and take a quick little look. Uh, SPY, again, you can see the little pivot top right here. We are above it. And if I flip back to the intraday chart here on the 10-minute, you can see that they're trying to keep the markets in check here. They're trying to hold them up. And you are having a little bit of selling from the highs of the day, but this is actually the beginnings of a small bullish pattern. So we'll have to see if that starts to uh, play out here to the upside or if it can fail. Now, see, this is the interesting thing. Just before I go, folks, micro bullish pattern. This is what we call a micro, micro being small time frame, bullish. And then you have the macro bearish. So macro bearish, which is the larger time frame on the SPY is bearish. But the actual micro pattern right here is, is slightly bullish. So sometimes the way that works is you'll get a little bit of an inch up so the micro pattern plays out and then the bigger move will come to the downside. I just don't know in this volume environment if we have enough volume to actually bring this market down today. Uh, volume today, folks, 65 million on the SPY at around 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. That's unbelievably light. And by the way, the mom and pops keep buying. And it's scary. It's scary. If you, for those of us that have lived through 2007, 8, and 9, and 
around 2000, 2001 and the collapse and the tech bubble burst and even going back to 87 and so forth, uh, you have to understand that you know, right now when the light volume is here, it's lifting the markets up because there's literally no volume in the market um, on the buy side. But again, as long as there's no volume and the institutions aren't heavily selling, you're going to get a market to float up. And that's just the small investor slowly buying and putting all their money in. I think we saw record inflows last in the last few weeks of, I think something like almost $10 billion last week alone of mutual fund money, which is all retail investor money. So it's just kind of the hook, line, and sinker deal, getting those suckers on board. And it's going to be a sad, sad event, ultimately. You know, it's something that I wish I could uh, reach more people and have them kind of be in protective mode. Because you'll get that next slam down. There's no doubt about it, folks. It's coming. And, uh, again, with any luck, most people will listen to this video and, and put themselves in more conservative mode instead of being on that cutting edge and trying to make money when the markets are at all-time highs. You know, that's greed right there. That's emotion right there. And that's really the downfall of all uh, investors, regardless of where you are or who you are. All right, guys, enough said. I'm going to step aside here, and uh, we'll see where this market ends today, kind of getting a little bit on the iffy side right here. And again, remember, macro bear with a micro bull. The micro bull has been popping a little bit here, but let's see if the macro bear starts taking over and uh, we come back in a little bit more here as we're trading below the 20 with a bearish macro pattern. Take care, guys. Come join us here at TheMoneyStocks.com.